Okay, guys and gals, today I'm with Bob on the Virginia Hawkeye. Bob, I don't want you to cry in the video here. I'm going to do my best not to, <laughs> but don't don't count me out. So. Right, because uh, it's a sad day. You guys, uh, you guys sold the Virginia Hawkeye after 10 years. It's been in the family for 40 years. Uh, bought a brand, your uh, uh, uncle. uncle. Yeah, your uncle bought the boat brand new. Uh, and then you guys took it over 10 years ago, right? It's been 10 years, and uh, it's a 1982 Grand Banks Classic, and uh, it's been in the family for four, almost 40 years. It, uh, That's a long it, it just, uh, It's uh, pretty outstanding to be able to say that you have a, uh, a boat that's second owner. I was, anyway, I was told that it, uh, it, it can help with the value, but there was a lot of emotion selling the boat, and what I, what I want to talk about in this video is uh, people think it's easy to sell a boat. It's almost as much work, it's probably more work selling the boat than it was buying the boat, wasn't it? Oh, it was absolutely. Uh, you know, when I bought the boat, there was a survey done on it. Uh, uh, the boat was in great shape at that point in time. Uh, you know, when you go through the process of uh, selling a boat, one, uh, you, you've got you've got to remember that you got to take everything off of it. <laughs> right, everything you've, you spent ten years putting wow, on it. Wow, <laughs> man! I mean, my walk, my water line uh, came up three inches. Oh, that's crazy. But uh, yeah, when you when you're in the process of selling the boat, uh, you know, the uh, the surveying is what probably gets you most. Uh, you know, because the survey surveyors uh, are trained to, uh, you know, pick a boat apart, and it's. Uh, and so I found myself doing a lot of work that I didn't necessarily think needed to be done. Uh, but, you know, I spent a little bit more money uh, trying to uh, make the improvements that the surveyor recommended uh, just so that it would satisfy the new buyer. Yeah, because I think a lot of people, and when they go to sell their boat, and not this boat really hasn't because most a lot of the owners, their boats are, they've been sitting for two or three years. Then they've been neglected for those two or three years where this one has not. This one, you guys have been, you just got back from a, a thousand mile trip in it. So Yeah, and, it's a, and I, I think that's the key to a successful boat ownership is Use um, using, yeah. using the boat. And we, you know, we have done that uh, for the, uh, the, ten, the 10 years that we've owned it. And I, I'm going to say that uh, you know, giving this boat up is a very, very hard thing to do for both my wife and I. Oh yeah, I bet. And, uh, uh, we have enjoyed it, and quite frankly, you know, I had a successful career in business. Uh, you know, we bought the boat almost ten years ago, and was that uh, your we, official retiring when you bought the boat, or not before? when I bought the boat? When I retired, uh, we moved on to the boat, and that was and five that, years, that was four years ago. After, or so you owned the boat for six years before before we actually moved on to it. And then, but the last four years of your retirement, you've been able to enjoy the boat full time. Uh, we have full time. Okay. We've lived on it, traveled on it. Uh, uh, we've run across you half a dozen places. Yeah, and, right. And uh, but it's uh, it it it's g leaving it and going back land based is uh, gonna yeah, is, is going to be tough because of, of my wife and I have both, or Vicki and I have both uh, grown so accustomed to uh, waking up in marinas and uh, enjoying the people in the marinas and meeting new people as we travel and uh, going back to land-based. Uh, maybe maybe I'll enjoy golf a little more or, you know, enjoy yeah, the right. hunting, but uh, emotionally uh, giving the boat up uh, is, is really tough. And quite frankly, I don't think I'm ever going to find another one like this one at the price of this one no because another thing because i want to be crystal clear in this bob you never even went to a broker or anything i think it all just kind of fell it fell, it, fell in place, place but... and you were not asking too much money for the boat like if some people will list these boats because i've seen this boat you know they but online it's listed for anywhere from a hundred thousand to about 70 70 60 to seventy thousand dollars somewhere in that price range and then you guys didn't ask too much because you could have put a ninety thousand dollar price tag on here, but you didn't, and you were able to sell the boat fairly quickly, actually. Well, and, and you know we probably really, a little quicker we, than we, you we, even we, wanted we really, to. <laughs> we really sold it before we wanted, wanted to. Wanted to, right? It actually and, sold. Uh, it you know, it was quickly. one of those where uh, the Grand Banks Classic Thirty Six is a sought after vessel. Yeah, it is. It is. And you know we've put it. We put uh, that in perspective. I mean, uh, there were multiple buyers for Thirty Sixes. And uh, one fell through, 
uh, immediately the backup buyer uh, found my boat and uh, when he found my boat he just fell in love with it yeah and then um, and I'm really not going to talk about the money in here but you had to go through three different surveys those are very emotional too right because you got guys tearing your boat apart looking at uh, I don't want to say they're they're just looking they're not you know that's what a guy you have a guy coming into the boat that a, that the buyer is paying to look at the vessel and you know he's going to just find everything that's wrong with the vessel and sometimes we think there our boats are ready to sell but they're not actually ready to sell but in the end uh, you know I think it's good that everybody goes through their boat a little bit especially one that has been sitting like again I'll keep repeating that because this boat has not been sitting this one's been up and down. Uh, you know, you guys just got a thousand mile trip almost. Yeah, it was right? pretty close, yeah. Yeah, it was almost a thousand mile trip, and you know, and um, didn't really have any problems on that trip at all. Really, other, other, other than going up in the spring when we had some major tidal issues. Yeah, all uh, <laughs> going two knots yeah, up the Yeah, that, uh, that was pretty tough. <laughs> but uh, you know, those are the kind of things you learn, and uh, I would probably not repeat. Uh, but that's boat ownership, and uh, you know, we're like I said, we went through we went through uh, the surveys. Uh, you know, we found some aged hoses and, you know, it's just stuff like that that yeah, right. uh, I, found, I found myself, okay, it's an aged hose, it's not cracked, it's not broken, uh, you know, it's not leaking water, but uh, what the heck, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. So, and then you guys went ahead and did a bottom job on the boat, everything, did. you had it pulled out way before anybody even started looking at it, I Actually, think, we yeah. did, we, we, we weren't selling it at the point. Quite right, the you were just doing your routine maintenance. Routine maintenance on your, it. Your three or four year uh, turnout, and then it found out that somebody w w was interested in it, and then they paid a surveyor. And then your next surveyor, same thing, it was, I, I didn't even go through that next survey with you, but... Uh, you know, it all worked out. The buyer's happy. You guys are happy. But it was very emotional going, getting, getting the boat ready and all that stuff too. It, right? it was, and I've, but it's a, it's the process you have to go through to sell a boat. And, right. You know, boats are not. It's not given. I mean, you know, the, the, the buyer, uh, according to what I've learned, and you're a broker, and uh, we had a broker on the boat, but you know, the buyer is not obligated to the boat. Uh, until he closes. Yeah, right. You know, because he may lose his earnest money uh, because he's agreed to accept the boat, but he can still back out of that boat anytime uh, he wants. Anytime he wants. Right. And so you're on that emotional roller coaster. And, uh, you know, my buyer came down uh, a week before we closed. And, uh, you know, for me, that was uh, a great thing to happen because he could experience the boat. Uh, I could take him through the. Uh, and, you know, through the operations Operation of the boat, uh, you know he, you know, and, you know he he left here uh, happy with the boat, but his his head was uh, spinning, spinning <laughs> yeah. uh, because of everything he was trying to absorb. Yeah, right. And uh, you know it's it's taken me ten years to get really comfortable with all of the systems on the boat, and uh, there's probably things I I don't even know about the boat. Yeah, right. But I think it's a great boat. I think the the new owner is extremely happy. Um, I've talked to him a few times, and uh, and uh, you know, you guys, like I said, you do, you weren't asking too much. You didn't, you just didn't walk in there and knock somebody's head off at the price. So, and I think that well, helps. and you know, it's, there's things that uh, you know, th this is probably not, it's a good thing for the buyer, uh, but you know, you have things like uh, he, uh, I, I threw in the dinghy and motor, uh, you know, with oh, wow. it. Uh, I threw in a, a, a very expensive spare prop oh, with wow. it. Nice. Uh, you know, I threw in a, a, a freezer that uh, is a portable freezer. I mean, stuff like that is just... It adds uh, up quick. It, it adds up quick. It and does. If, it if, really does. If he had to go out and purchase that stuff... Yeah, right. You know, he's spending thousands more dollars. Yeah, right. Uh, so, you know, we're basically... You know, I walked him through, man, this boat has got every nut, bolt, and screw that you can think of. It's got every electrical connector you can think of. Uh, I've got a full supply of. Are you leaving uh, all that for him? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So nice. I mean, he, he, he's getting all of that as as part of the purchase. I, I have no need for it after yeah, right. I leave here. I think some people I see him <laughs> carting off the boat. I'm. What are you going to do with it? Throw it in the trash and six. I mean. No. You, unless you, you're going you, into another boat right away. I mean, you you're never especially well, this you, is a cruising boat. You know boat. what's funny, Paul, is that uh, uh, you know I, I, her uncle. 
was just obsessed with having stuff on the boat. Yeah, just and you know, I mean spare parts and stuff. Spare parts. Oh, okay. And so he, you know, he has this big box that's this high, this wide, and it's uh, nothing but nuts and bolts and screws and oh, wow. uh, things that you might need. In the ten years that I've been on this boat, <laughs> right. I may have gotten in that box two or three <laughs> times. times. Right, I think you know. And so it's it, for me, it's overkill. You know, I'll never use all those nuts, bolts, and screws. So let's leave them with the new owner. Yeah, same thing with uh, Southern Estate it was it was the same way. I mean, we found ourselves just it was almost like I don't want to say hoarders, but my God, Bob, there was stuff. And every nook, there still is today. Yeah. I still, I can still open up compartments where he has stuff that we just haven't even gone through yet. But for the most part, you know, the Lazarette's cleaned out the that that one room because I use that room for my office now. But that thing was just stacked from floor to ceiling. I think with, I remember seeing that. Oh, so it's, uh, yeah, because you got you caught us. I got, some I, got it, I got it before you uh, started it, remodeling. Yeah, and also you were there when they saw that whole, but. Anyway, it's just it's a process, and some of these boats, you it, it's time to let go. But I I'm gonna miss you, big guy. I'm gonna miss you. I'm a, you know it's uh that that's part of the loss that Vicky and I are gonna have is that friends like you uh, that we've uh, grown to know and really care about uh, we're gonna miss we're gonna miss them. Yeah, and, uh, I think so, and it'll be fun for you guys. You, now you'll be able to come out. You got you got condos and everything here, but even spend the night on the boat one night. You know. Uh, next year when you after you get settled in and stuff like that and the, the new owner has encouraged us to do that so yeah that would be awesome that for him to let you come out and it would be awesome well I'm, he's told me that he's not going to change the name uh, which was it, kind of those one of the things that you wanted for in the boat when you were selling the boat oh yeah scales. i mean it's uh for us to keep the uh, virginia hawkeye which was uh kind of original to the boat our uncle who owned the boat initially uh worked in virginia uh, he was a Hawkeye out of Iowa. Yeah, nice. And uh, uh, so ultimately the name of Virginia Hawkeye came about. And it, uh, we love the name. It's a unique name. As we travel around, there are people who still remember, you know, marinas uh, that still remember the Virginia Hawkeye. Yeah, because this, this boat's been all the way from Green Turtle Bay all the way up the East Coast to Bahamas. It's it, been everywhere. It, it's done the loop. It's uh, Oh, it it's, has done the loop. It complete has done loop. the loop, the, the complete loop. Uh, it's gone up and down the east coast uh he told me 16 17 times oh wow and it's been over to the bahamas a half a dozen times so and then the keys i know it's been down to the keys because you guys have taken it to the keys oh yeah we took it to uh marathon last year or year before, before last yeah. and uh we've traveled with the boat i mean we've been retired on it for four years it's it's been the best 10 years of my life I, 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 and it, for me to say that and and uh, say it sincerely uh it's been the best 10 years you said you weren't going to cry here bob I, 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 i'm holding <laughs> back my friend i'm holding back anyway i want to thank bob and vicky for sharing it with us and sharing their whole experience because we'll do a, a, a video too later on this week with bob he's going to go over the single hand because this is a single screw no thruster he's been driving the boat for 10 years so we'll get a few tips from him on driving it it's my favorite setup because it's it, they're so much easier. But anyway, I just want to say goodbye. I want to end this video. Uh, thank you so much, Bob and Vicki. Uh, peace out. Remember, live life with no regret. I do, and I think Bob did too, he, enjoying that four years. And as he's getting older here, he's kind of seeing that it's time to say goodbye to the Virginia Hawkeye. It, it is, and uh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you doing this for me. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, because you can come back and watch it. I know, yeah. All right.